Welcome back, welcome back to another episode of HGV Talks. I'm Breezy, and yeah, I sit here and talk for about 10-15 minutes once a week, and just kind of recap what's going on in my life and what I'm uh what I'm working on, and answer whatever questions people ask, even though it's usually not too many. Um, last week I was talking about how I was going to the Celtics game, which we did end up going. We went to Game One of the Eastern Conference Finals, Celtics versus Pacers, and it was a uh, Crazy, crazy game. If you guys watched it, you saw there's a camera a tiny bit. It was it went into overtime. It was a super competitive game. We almost lost and then we won and it was it was just insane. It was a extremely, extremely exciting game to go to, which is very satisfying, you know, when you spend a ridiculous amount of money on tickets. Uh you just all you want is a good game and hopefully a win. Um it's not the best when you spend, you know, a bunch of money, like spend a thousand dollars on a night, on a night out, all the driving and stuff. And, and then you watch the game and then it's over and, you know, nothing exciting really happens. It's either a blowout or you lose and that's the worst. So I'm glad it was a great game and we won in overtime. It was insane. Absolute insanity. Celtics are up 2-0 in the series right now. Um, I'm recording this on Saturday, so they have a game tonight. Um, Tyrese Halliburton's hurt, so he's probably, you know, it's pretty much a, it's assuming it's going to be pretty much a done deal for the Pacers, unfortunately. I was hoping it'd be a more competitive and entertaining series, but, uh, the Wolves and the Mavs got that covered for us. Skull Wolves, says Benny. Um, the Wolves and Mavs series has been so good, man. The Mavs being up 2-0 kind of sucks. I want the Wolves to win, but... You know, it's been really close games. Can't really hate on either team. It's just been good basketball. I hope it goes seven games just for, you know, the fact of having more basketball to watch. And yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to, I don't want this to be just a basketball podcast. I'm just going to keep it a little brief. I don't want to just talk about sports the entire time. Um, What else going on this week? Um, What did I do this week? I had a doctor's appointment on Monday. I got a new primary care because my wife's job changed, so our insurance changed. So unfortunately, I have to switch primary cares because insurance is a scam, and it can tell you who you can and can't go to. Um, I got blood work done. My arm is so bruised up, dude. The last, like, two times I got blood work, I got so bruised up. It's so gross. Last time was way worse. This one wasn't even as bad. I didn't think it was going to bruise up that much, but... Uh, I don't know if it's like I'm not hydrated enough for it or if the people doing it just suck, but they got me good. They got me good. Uh, everything obviously was fine at the, you know, I'm in good health as far as I know. Uh, the labs did come in and they told me that my, because I told them about, um, you know, I was like, I've been uh, having a rough like six months or so, you know, I a lot of sports on, a lot of drinking, a lot of unhealthiness. I told him about the subathon, and I was like, you know, I was really not taking good care of myself during that time. And, you know, I'm still not doing phenomenal with, you know, diet and exercise. So I was like, you know, I'm definitely not in the best shape right now. Uh, and they told me that my liver enzymes were a smidge high, which apparently is like, so like it's, you know, after... We were talking about it, kind of assumed this might be the case because you said that you've been, you know, it happens from like a lack of exercise and too much drinking, pretty much. So I'm doing more labs in like a couple months. They're going to redo them. They're like, just try to cut it back, try to focus up on healing. I mean, health, not healing, on your health. And we'll see, see how it looks in a couple months. So for this summer, I am diving into the health the health focus. It's going to be my main thing. Um, more than anything. Now I'm going to focus on getting my YouTube series continued, the soul link, keeping that going up consistently and, you know, stream here and there when I can, but honestly I'm putting it all in the back burner. I'm going to focus up on making sure I exercise and try to eat better and no drinking. I want to do zero drinking for another extended period of time. The like couple months that I've done those random, like, 30 days of no drinking is literally the best I ever feel. So I definitely want to do it again. Starting, what was it, yesterday when I got that call? (laughs) 
yesterday is when they called me and told me about the liver enzyme thing. So I was like, you know what? Didn't drink yesterday. Not drinking today. Not going to drink until who knows? Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just cut back permanently. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Aside from that, everything's still kind of cruising along. Streams have been going really good, honestly. Uh, the TikTok is extremely close to hitting the 10,000 followers that I need so I can apply for this program. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, everything's looking good. You know, it's obviously been a slow month donation wise because post subathon, but I mean, that's every single time after a subathon. I'm hoping that, you know, now that we got the KCIP program and, you know, Facebook's actually doing pretty well right now. My short form videos are doing like really good. So I'm hoping with a combination of that, you know, the YouTube ad revenue that I get um, between Facebook, YouTube, and then Kick KCIP, then TikTok, if I can get that going, you know, it looks like I'll hopefully be able to start, you know, increasing that floor of how much I make a, a month. You know, it's always been the biggest stressor for this job is the fact that, you know, I'm... 99% of my stuff and my income is donation based. So the more I increase, you know, views across the platforms, the more I make just based off of ad revenue and it creates a little less stress for me. Um, still definitely not out of the woods as far as, you know, not relying on donations, but getting closer and closer and closer. You know, the KCIP, I made more money from it this month than I made from donations you know that's a big thing for me um but we got a lot of people with recurring subs now on kick let me see how many we got we got like 20 something i think or 30 something yeah so that's really nice um just having more people that are manually subscribed so i don't have to rely on people gifting that helps dude there's just so many little things so many little things if i can just get that tiktok going and then I don't know how much I make from that. Hopefully it's good. Get in there. I don't know. I feel like I'm hopeful, trying to feel, you know, optimistic about it. Like I said, I don't, relying on gifted subs is just stressful in general. Um, getting independent from that and self-sufficient is just the goal. So feeling, feeling like we're getting there. We're almost there. I think once we hit this 10K on TikTok and that starts going, I think I'm going to feel a million times better because then I'll be making money from Kick, YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, which is all the platforms I make content on. I'll be getting monetized from all of the content I make from all of that, which is amazing. So let's hope that keeps going up. Uh, I do appreciate, obviously, everybody that does still gift, you know, even though it's post subathon, is people still gifting subs here and there. It's still happening. You know, we haven't been doing the purgatory, which is, you know, historically been the biggest driver for donations on my channel. The, uh, the nuzlocks I do with the sabotages from the chat. Uh, I've slowed down on those a little bit just cause I'm having so much fun with the iron mon, honestly, like the iron mon I'm doing right now. Like the fact that I've had so many like really good runs, I'm just like, I feel like I can like I'm so close to beating it and I don't want to take time away from it. And it's doing really well viewership wise. Like my viewership from doing Iron Mon is double what it does on kick. Uh, compared to Iron Mon, the purgatory, I mean, I guess I said the backwards. The viewership on Iron Mon is much higher than the viewership is for the purgatory. You know, the couple times that I've done the purgatory, you know, because a lot of the new viewers haven't seen it. They don't really know what it's about. Um, and then on TikTok, it'd be the same thing. The viewership is so much better during the Iron Mon. And at this moment right now, I got to kind of count on that and focus on that more than, you know, playing the game mode that's going to potentially drive more donations. It's kind of always been my issue with the purgatory. Ugh. You know, I never wanted the purgatory to be such a consistent thing on the channel. I didn't want people 
feeling like they needed to donate to be involved in the content. I didn't want people... I didn't want the content to rely on people donating because the purgatory is only entertaining to watch if people are donating and sabotaging. So it's like, it feels like I'm requiring people to donate. And it just, I've never, honestly, never really super like 100% enjoyed the purgatory style because of the donation aspect of it. But it was always a community favorite. They always enjoyed it the most. So, it, you know, kind of, if you guys like it, then, you know, I'll, kind of gets me over the aspect of it of you know being it donation based but you know it's if i could stream without having any sort of donation based interactions i 100 percent would because it helps me just rely on doing what i think is the most entertaining and focusing on communicating with people and all that i think that's more important for the content than you know the donations but at the same time I can't do this full time without donations. So weird middle ground, weird pickle I've been in for, you know, three years now is the same thing. I mean, if you guys have been watching this podcast long enough, you've heard these conundrums I've been dealing with this whole time. It's the same stuff forever, man. It's just stressing about how, where the money comes from and where it's, if it's going to keep coming, you know, for this job that I got, you know, it's, constant battle but um what else is going on youtube started we're doing the soul link that's been going okay it's been i mean it's been fun obviously i love recording them but viewership on it's been a little like lower than i expected you know the starter selection video it has 500 views right now it had a lot of comments but it was like weirdly lower it was so much lower view than previous starter selections which was just weird to me because usually that's like the most viewed video we get um how was it on facebook let me see i'm gonna try to compare because youtube i mean the second episode and the ones on max channel have been like kind of consistent you know doing okay um the Facebook, I haven't really been paying as much attention to the Facebook and the comments and whatnot on there. Uh, let's see. It's not showing me the viewer numbers. Sweet. Okay. Facebook's so annoying. <laughs> They've done nothing to improve Facebook in so many years, man. Like, the ability to look at your insights is just still so bad. Just trying to see how many views a video has is like not easy. It's like hard to find it. Ah, oh, let me see. Let's go jump through 25 different hoops just to find out. Okay, they got 1.9k views, three second views, which you know it's not a ton. Um does it say how many one minute views? 400 one minute views. So that's like the real amount of views it got. So that's much lower than it usually is, man. I'm telling you, but short form video has been doing really good on Facebook. So is what it is. That's kind of just the secondary thing to me now. Um, YouTube's where I would love to get something to pop off on there. I posted the video of me beating the Emerald national deck challenge. Um, and it did okay. It's like still getting some views. But uh, still, like, I don't know. That's been a little demoralizing. How, like, underwhelming these, like, one-off videos that I'm doing have been. You know, I feel like they're going to do so much better, and then they just don't. <laughs> like, the Gold Dengo run, it did, it did okay. You know, I had the video I did where I tried to beat Radical Red with just one Pokemon. And look how that one do. That one did, I think, worse. Where is it? Um, is it further back? It is. That one did horrible. Which I thought that one was gonna do good. Put a lot of work into that one. You know, my play, like my let's play videos, is just like what consistently does well. But I mean, a let's play, the let's play videos really isn't like. 
a great way to, you know, keep a keep a page alive. You know, I spend say 30 minutes recording and then 30 minutes editing and uploading a video. So it's basically an hour of work for every single video I do at least. And then, you know, replying to comments and uh, any other editing I might have to do for it. Say it's an hour an episode. It's like I make like five bucks per YouTube video I make, you know, pretty consistently. And it's like, yeah, it's still something. It's still money to be made and it's still keeping my page afloat. Like I said, all these things that they do add up, but you know, once in a while, I'd hope that I can get a video to pop off and, you know, maybe make 50 bucks on one video and then it roll over to getting more views for other videos and them slowly making $6 a video instead of $5. Yeah, I don't know all that. So I was hoping these one-off videos would be a little more impactful on my page, but they have not been right now. Um, I know collabs and stuff is big for YouTube. Like if I did a collab with a bigger Pokemon creator than myself that, you know, can expose my content to a new audience. You know, I have almost 2000 videos on my page now, I think. So, you know, over time I could, uh, increase my views that way but i just don't i don't know these people i don't know other content creators really like i don't want to be reaching out to people just like for that reason i don't know just another day in the life of a content creator uh, i'm just trying to look at some analytics real quick I'm trying to see how my facebook's been doing like long term yeah it's been kind of just super steady Looking over like the past like a year and a half. Super steady. Nothing really popping off on there. Facebook, the one thing that was doing really good for it was uh Radical Red videos. Always did really good on there. I had a the last Radical Red playthrough I did, I should have uploaded it to YouTube. I mean to Facebook, and I didn't. I don't think I did anyway. Pretty sure I didn't. And I deleted the videos already because I was making space on my hard drive for more content. And I think I deleted them. But doing a Radical Red playthrough would probably be smart to do on there. Um, Let me double check. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I didn't post it on here. It was only on YouTube. Maybe I should just share that on Facebook. Maybe I'll get lucky. But whatever. Aside from all that. Um... We got a good groove going right now. Soul Link's going to be good. It's good content. It's enjoyable to make. Quality's always good. You know, me and Mac always collab. You know, me and him are just a good pair. I've always enjoyed making content with him. Um, streams are going well with the Iron Mon. I just got to suck it up and stop stressing about, you know, what is working and what isn't working and just go with the flow. And yeah, we'll see how everything goes. Uh, if you guys got any questions about it, Anything about content? Anything about me at all? I really don't care. Ask your questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right? Peace out.